Welcome! In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this Rockby Uno R3 starter kit. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So what this is, is kind of like an electronics project kit. And I do want to say that I'm not an electronics expert. I've dabbled in it over the years. I'm always trying to learn more. I find it pretty difficult at times, but the more time I spend with it, the more I learn. Now what this is, is an Arduino system. So the Arduino is a microcontroller. It's essentially a small computer and it's used for different electronics projects. You can connect different things like sensors, buttons, lights to it. And then you program the Arduino using a computer and you can do some really cool projects with it. So with a kit like this, you're going to use electronics and programming to do projects. So here it says official original design, massive learning materials, abundant component series, laboratory instruction manual. So let's get this open. So it comes in this nice plastic box. We'll open that up. And here we have a user guide. So I'm not going to cover this extensively in this video, it'd take forever, but the whole manual is around a little over 150 pages. Here's the microcontroller, it's an AT Mega 328P. Analog input pins is six, input voltage is seven to 12 volts, input voltage limit is six to 20 volts, operating voltage is five volts, PWM, that's pulse width modulation digital IO pins is six. So here are the table of contents. You can look through this has all sorts of different projects. And here are some too. Needless to say, it's not limited to these projects, but it should help you learn. So this has introduction to the Arduino, talks about the Arduino IDE. So that's the software you run on your computer. And this will run on Mac, Linux, and Windows computers. And it shouldn't have very heavy requirements. So you could use this with even an older computer. So it looks like it talks about using that. And next it talks about the C programming language. So I'm not an expert in C. I used to program in PHP, which is kind of similar to C in some ways, but I'm guessing the projects in here will have the code for you and it could help you learn C. But this talks about data types, things like that, operators, flow control. It's a little tutorial here on C, it looks like. And then we have some Arduino syntax. So here's a getting started. Looks like there's some LEDs here and we have some resistors. So when you hook LEDs up, typically you use a resistor to lower the current. And here's a little project. I'm guessing this will blink them or turn them on and off. So go through this book here real quick. You can see there's just project after project. So it talks about how to wire them up and then it has code for running them. And I'm guessing this code is somewhere in here. We'll look through it. But I'm going to give an overview of what comes in it and then I'll try and throw a project together. I'm not going to film all that because it could take me a while. So these are the different things it comes with. So there is a wide variety here. This is pretty impressive. We have relay module, joystick module, soil temperature and humidity module, a matrix, seven segment displays, LCD, we have rectifiers, we have transistors, ultrasonic sensor, photoresistor, flame sensor. Here's a temperature humidity sensor, shock sensor, thermistors, jumper wires, remote buttons. So this might come with one of these, but if you have a project where you want multiples of these, these are standard components here. So say you build something with the ultrasonic sensor and you want a second one, you can easily find these and order a second one online. This doesn't use proprietary stuff as far as I know. Then we have the Arduino, USB cable, comes with nine volt battery, so you can power it with a battery. It has a bunch of resistors, stepper motor driver, stepper motor, direct current motor, fan blade, servo motor, little traffic signal, LEDs, expansion board, power supply module, breadboard, active buzzer, passive buzzer, tilt switch, IR receiver module, and potentiometer. So now if we look in here, I mean, this is amazing here. <laughs> has all these packages. Here is a seven segment display and has a seven segment display in it. So this is all labeled. I mean, this is just great. Here's a traffic signal. Here we have the transistors, LEDs, potentiometers, DuPont wires, remote, servo, jumper wire, rectifiers, photoresistors, tilt switches. These are 330 ohm resistors. It's a little joystick control, some buttons, Hall effect sensors, breadboard. Here's that eight by eight matrix. Yeah. Let me widen that out a little bit. So in some ways this can look intimidating, but having not done a project yet, I have to say I really like this with all the packages here, nicely labeled, so I can lay these all out. I can pick a project in here and I can easily pick out the components. I certainly know what some things are. I could easily identify a resistor. If I saw this just sitting somewhere, I might think it's a capacitor, but that's actually the shock sensor. So it's nice having everything labeled. So I'm going to pick out a project or two, I'll throw them together and I'll come back and give some feedback on this. So I did get all the components laid out here. Now the Amazon description says 55 packets. Oftentimes if you see a product description that mentions a count of items, they'll kind of inflate it. Like they might count a bag itself as an item. This did the opposite. Oftentimes they'll have multiple components. So this has five in it. The resistors, I think they have 10 or so. 
So 55 is pretty conservative. So this has a lot more than 55 items. It's more accurately to say 55 individual types of items. And we do have that learning resources, and I'm guessing that will have the projects in it. Okay, so I put a project together. This is 3.1 LED running light experiment. So this is pretty easy to set up. I will go over some of the challenges that you might face. So we have the Uno R1 board, and then we have some breadboard here. Now on the Uno board, we have these sockets where you can place the pins, and this black wire is plugged into ground, and these blue wires are plugged into the digital I.O. So these are pins 7, 6, and 5, or 5, 6, and 7. Now one of the challenges is that in the book, it's a little tricky to see where this is plugged in, but you can see there's a break between the two headers so this starts right on the edge of that break and you can also count up so it's zero one two three four five six up to seven and the issue here it may be hard to see on the camera but the numbers aren't easy to read but then when you look through the code on the next page you can see it says led one five led two six led three seven so you can confirm the pins there on the code so next, let's look at the breadboard. Now this isn't going to be a full electronics tutorial. I'll give you the basics of the breadboard. If you look at the plus minus here, each of these pins in the plus are electrically connected. Same with the minus. Now the minus and plus on this side are not connected to the minus and plus on this side. Although they can be, you can just run a jumper between them and then you can connect them up. So these are connected this way. The middle is connected this way. So if we look here, we have the digital I.O. on the same row as this resistor, and then that jumps over to the other side, and that's connected to the LED. Now you want to use a resistor in line with an LED so you don't have too much current. Then the other side goes down to the ground, connected up to the main ground. So LEDs have polarity. So here's a blue LED. You can see one pin is longer than the other. So one is plus, one is minus. It's pretty easy to remember. The shorter one is minus. So I think plus is the longer, minus is the shorter. So I wired this all up with the diagram. These are the specific components I used. I just used three LEDs, any color, or you can use all the same color. I use the jumper wires. Of course, these jumper wires have pins on both sides and you can use any color, but if you can, it's nice to use black for ground, red for positive. Then you use the USB cable, the 220 ohm resistors, the controller board and the breadboard. Now, something about these resistors here, they come straight. You just bend them in a U-shape to put them in the breadboard. Now, when you're done, you probably want to leave them in that U-shape and just throw them back in the bag. I wouldn't try straightening them out. If you bend them multiple times, they can break. Now, you can replace them, obviously, too. But you can just put them in here bent, and they'll probably be in the right position for next time you use them. So let's pop over to the computer and look at the code real quick. Okay, I'm over here at my computer now. So I copy the micro SD card onto my hard drive just to make it more convenient. It's also a good idea just to do that so you can have a backup in case you lose or damage the card. So this has a number of different things on it, including the full user guide, but it also has routine and examples. So you don't have to type the code in from the book. You can just open it here. And the neat thing about this is that you have the user guide here, but the individual experiments also have individual PDFs. So we're working on the running light experiment. So I can double click here and we can see the PDF for that specific experiment and only the pages for that experiment. So that makes it very convenient to work on the different projects. You don't have to flip through the PDF or even the book. So I've installed the Arduino IDE on my computer. It does come on the SD card, but you can also download the latest version on the internet. So I can double click on this experiment, INO, and it will bring it up. Now I currently have the Uno R3 plugged into the computer still. So here we have the code, same as in the book. Now to get this code onto the board, we just go up here and select our board. So I have the Arduino Uno there. I can click it. Now we can verify the code if we want. I'll do that real quick. You don't have to. It will automatically do it when you upload. So if you hit upload, it will verify then upload. So I'll hit upload. And just like that, we've uploaded it to the board. It's very fast and easy. So you can do this how you want. You could type all the code in. That's not how I would do it. That's a lot of typing. If you're trying to learn this stuff, the easy way would be to open up the code and then you can go around here and change it. So what this currently does is it turns on each LED in series and then turns them off in series. And then in between it has a delay. So this delay is 500 milliseconds or half a second. So for this one, you might want to say, remove an LED, add an LED, or maybe change the delay. So you can go in and modify this code. You could change this delay to a 10th of a second or maybe a full second and then you can upload the code and see how it changes in the actual hardware. So I was also talking about those pins can be kind of hard to see in the manual. If we open this up 
and scroll down. I can zoom in on this a little bit. And it's still a little tricky to see the numbers, but you can see them. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I think the micro SD card is a great resource for this. Okay, so here's my next experiment. It's a stepper motor experiment. So this one, we're using the R3 board. We're using a stepper driver and a stepper motor. So on the stepper motor here, I did add a little masking tape flag to help you see the movement because it is a pretty subtle movement. So anytime you're testing motors and such, you can make a little flag out of a piece of tape and it can help you see the movement. So a stepper motor gives you precise movement. So these are very common in things like 3D printers. Now to hook this up, we used the female to male wires and these were all together. So you can just peel them off. I actually left these together, but later I'll probably end up peeling them off. So you can just pull those apart. So if we look at the computer here, you can click this serial monitor in the upper right hand corner. And then at the bottom here, it's outputting the number of steps in the console. So you can see we're at like 9,000 some steps. So this can be used to monitor things you're doing on the R3, or you can use it for debugging purposes and such. So those are just a few projects you can do with the Rockby Uno R3 starter kit. So the way I would recommend going about this is to go through a lot of the examples that came with the kit, build them, test them out, modify them, and then when you get more comfortable with this, you can start developing your own projects. So here we had a stepper driver, but we could then maybe put a button on it to turn it on or off. You could use the joystick here to control it. You could use a servo to make gadgets, things like that. You know, the sky's the limit. I really like that this came with so many components. When you're building projects, having all the different tools available and knowing what they can do can give you more options and ideas. But I found this very easy to use. I plugged it in. The software recognized the board. It was super easy to upload. Now, as you're going through this, you'll probably come upon projects where they won't work. And I would tell you not to get discouraged. That's very common with things like this. Just trace back through all the steps, make sure everything is connected properly. It's inevitable that you'll plug in things wrong or hook up the components in the wrong pins or something, but that's just part of the learning process. And when you work with electronics and computers, debugging is a big part of that. So it's a good skill to learn. So I look forward to working through these experiments and my kid is even excited to also join me in some of these too. As I was setting up the LED lights, he was helping me pick out the colors and such, and he already came up with some ideas for some games he wants to build with some of these components. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.